So I'm the founder and CEO of Intrinio, which means I wear a lot of hats. I cover everything from fundraising to managing my executive team, plans for growth, vision, strategy, enterprise sales, partnerships, PR, media. I do a lot as the CEO of an early stage startup, but it's never boring. So a lot of times with technology startups, you run into a problem, and then when you try to solve the problem, you end up with a business, and that's exactly what happened to me and my co-founder. We were originally trying to build software for the finance and investing space, and in finance and capital markets, everything runs off of data. The data that we needed to power the software that we were building costed $80,000 a month just to get off the ground. And so we recognize in finance, data is everything. The data is very expensive, it's very hard to get access to. So we wanted to rebuild the supply chain for some of these data sets and make data more accessible, more affordable, um, particularly for very technical end users. That kind of became the mission of our business was to unlock data sets, put them in the hands of the innovators that are challenging the system and rebuilding the financial industry. Technically, the business started in Chicago, um, and when we realized how much work we had in front of us, how much technology we needed to build, we knew we couldn't afford to do it in a city that big. Now, I had negative money because I was fresh out of college, so I needed to go somewhere with my co-founder that had an affordable cost of living that we could get off the ground until our company was generating revenue. Both of our parents, obviously, were making a move towards Florida because, uh, you know, your kids grew up in Wisconsin, you're ready to, ready to leave after a while. Um, and so we knew we were gonna have family down here. We knew there was a lower cost of living. We knew it was a breath of fresh sunshine after being in the snow our entire lives. And so all of those things brought us down here. And it turned out to be a great, very affordable place to get our business off the ground. We didn't know whether or not we were gonna stay. What made us stay was everything else. All of the life, the arts, the music, the culture, the community, the support for entrepreneurs locally. We just absolutely fell in love with the area. Originally we were in Tampa. We ended up liking the vibe of St. Pete a little bit more. One of my good friends always says St. Pete has a soul. Interestingly enough, our investors started to say, no problem, stay in Florida because we know you're actually saving money. Your money is going a longer way. It's a competitive advantage and we'd love to come to a board meeting in December, <laughs> right? So all of those things kind of came together and we realized there was this rise of the rest movement where people started to realize that there are valuable companies in undervalued areas and Tampa Bay 100% fit that bill. We decided we wanted to stay and grow here and it's been fantastic. we were able to recruit people here pretty easily. It's not a hard sell to try to convince somebody to move to a beautiful waterfront location with a great culture and a thriving and growing tech scene. It's kind of fun to get in on a city when it's really on the upswing and when things are starting to move in an exciting direction. We're surrounded by local universities here. So we found a plethora of marketing and sales and administrative talent down here. The influx of these students coming out of the universities, oftentimes they don't want to leave Florida. And if you would have asked you know, students 10, 15, 20 years ago, they had to in order to find the jobs they wanted. Now, because the tech scene is doing so well in this area, we can actually take the opportunity to have those students stay. And it makes them very happy to know that they don't have to leave Florida. So it's easy to recruit marketing and sales, um, and it's easy to relocate any tech employees that we need to to the area.